Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Washington DC. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Ben Stark and we are in the last round of Swiss, round number 15. This is for top eight. Nice start here for Brian Brown and Ben. He's got the uh, Seder Hoplite. Uh, car that needs a significant amount of work to make really good. But yeah. Sigilski's nice follow-up. I mean, I like Boros Aggro. If you have enough ways to target it, I'll play a Hoplite. Not a card I take early, not a card I'm a huge fan of. All right, now, so far we don't know a lot about Charles League or his deck uh, he's on. Up. Two uh, planes okay. here, and he says, come at me. <laughs> don't think he has a choice in that. Yeah. And there's uh, the Scry Trigger from Sigil Skink, which is going to push a card to the bottom. And does the curve out continue here for BBD? Yes, but no land drop. So he probably pushed some spell to the bottom as he wants to try to find some more lands. Another planes here for Charles. To be honest, look at BBD's hand. I don't even know if he cares if he draws a land or oh, not. Oh, really? Is it all low curve? I, I think he has um, Fearsome Temper, which costs three. Uh -huh. And then Flame Speaker's Will, which costs one. Uh, Oppressive Rays, mm -hmm. which costs one. And God's Willing, which costs one. <laughs> oh, wow, OK. And he does actually find third land right on time here as well, as Charles has played an Eagle of the Watch and shipped the turn back. So, I mean, I think I would um, put the uh, Fearsome Temper on the Sigil King because I want to be able to keep attacking with that. But he has a lot of reasonable options here. Uh, here's, here's a nice one, too, that he's got. He's got Flame Speaker's Will. N not a great magic card, but it fits oh, the theme right. of okay. BBD's deck here and this, lets him get in for a ton. And this is a totally reasonable play, too, because he's dealing more damage and he's so using the oppressive rays, and it's good to get that out early because you want to kind of pressure Charles so that if he casts something, he can't block. Right, and that was six damage right there. Charles is all the way down to 10. Also, BBD might be under the impression that Charles is missing one of his colors. I, I actually think he might be mono white. In his hand are planes and more white cards. Yeah. I mean, it could be not the case, but BBD probably wants to try to shut the door as quickly as possible yeah, I, on Charles here. I was kind of just off the automatic mindset of maybe save my removal for something better. Right. But Oppressive Rays is the kind of card you kind of want to slap down early and turn your guys with. Because, I mean, it, it's effectively just going to completely remove that right. creature here. And it's right. not a card I have a lot of experience with. Like, I've, I've played against it a little bit. I haven't played with it that much. So I, I think uh, BBD probably made the right play here. Okay. And Here's I mean, Fearsome Temper. It looks like it's going to be really hard for Charles to get back in this game now. Right. Now get another Scry. If he wants, he can trade off his Akron Mastiff for the Sigil Skink. Yeah, I mean, he's in a really bad position, right? If uh, League takes it here, it'll be nine. He'll be all the way down to one. And if he blocks, he's just trading for a two one. Still going to be a three, and he's still facing two lethal creatures. Yeah. Yeah, he's in a terrible position here. BBD with the hyper aggro deck here, and he is going to block, Two, though. Seven. So Sigil Skink hits the bin. But he still takes a big chunk of damage, dropping him all the way down to three. All right, there's a forest. So he is not mono white, though. I don't think he has any green cards in his hand. But we're done here. Wow. Not important, but kind of interesting. I probably wouldn't play the parson and then concede. Did he play it? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like, you know, now BBD is going to board in his anti-green stuff necessarily. He doesn't no. even know what green cards are. But there's no reason to show that to your opponent right before you concede. Right. I mean, if you pass a turn and you're representing something or whatever, but that's kind of fruitless in this situation and people I know a lot of people who aren't big fans of conceding because they say well you give away stuff you don't have and mm -hmm. stuff but in this situation your opponent's not going to not attack with two lethal guys right so I have no problem with conceding so that you know maybe I just preserve time preserve energy whatever see but, what but I wouldn't the, show the forest but I yeah so I wouldn't show the forest but don't you just say go but like what exactly are, are you representing nothing so you're hoping your opponent maybe has a heart attack on his turn before he can attack you yes not really my style. You know, or maybe he, he, he puts one more thing down that, that you didn't know about or whatever. Let's take a look at our Magic 2015 Pro Tour slide here. It's pretty sweet. August 1st through 3rd, 2014 in Portland, Oregon, USA. Standard constructed. And, uh, of course, Magic 2015 Booster Draft. Uh, that is going to be one heck of an event. And, you know, one of the best parts about that tournament is that it's going to cap off the pro season, meaning that all of the world championship seats are going to get done. All the World Magic Cup uh, national champs are going to be set. Pressure's on. The pressure's on, and uh, there's going to be a lot of people that need a lot of great things to happen in that tournament. It really ups the drama and, uh, and, and puts a big focus on people doing well at one specific event. You know, it's, it's a marathon, right? I mean, the, you know, a pro season is a long time. There's a lot of different ways to get pro points. You can travel, you can go to GPs, you can go to PTs, but it all comes down to this last one for people that are close or, you know, on the border, maybe need something big to have. I remember, you know, a mutual friend of ours, Luis Scott Vargas, he, uh, he needed a top 16 to get platinum last year in the last PT, and he did. Yeah. Now I think he needs a top eight, maybe? Yeah, I think so. 
Top eight or bust? Yeah. We're not, we're not like friends. Yeah, he hasn't had the best year. He hasn't been running that well this year. Right. All right, so players getting ready to go for the second game again. Uh, what is that? <laughs> what are we looking at? One card not in a sleeve. was just in those piles. Oh, in uh, in Charles's hand? No, in Brian Brown Nguyen's. Uh, he oh. was just piling out his deck, and oh. just a card not in a sleeve just landed on top of one. <laughs> I don't know what it was. He just took it away and put it in his box. So I'm guessing it's the card he boarded out. He probably de-sleeved it. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But yeah, on the concession thing, also. Um, yeah, what I, about that? If I can represent something I don't have, I will just pass. Like, yeah. let's say Divine Verdict sure. would keep me alive. Yeah. And then my opponent should attack, but maybe he won't because like I might have Divine Verdict. Right. I'll pass the turn and make them attack me. Sure. Right. I mean, because the way I view it is, like, I'm investing five seconds into this. Sure, but like. Five seconds is enough for me to just be like, turn your guy sideways. And that way I just always set the precedent that, no, you're going to have to kill yeah, me. Yeah, but you don't have to always set a precedent if it's a, if it's completely clear. Like, let's pretend he passes there for with four planes up. For five seconds, I'm willing to do it. Yeah, but let's pretend he passes there with four planes up, right? Yeah. You're going to get attacked. Right. What are you gaining? I, what am I losing is what I'm saying. Five seconds. Yeah, I, I mean, don't mind. What if your opponent thinks, what if before your opponent attacks, uh -huh. he has to think, well, what are the possible cards in this format? It, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what if it's actually a minute, not five seconds? And then what if you get a draw out of top eight because you play a really long game two or three that you didn't think you were going to play that you didn't know yet because sure. you took that 30 seconds or minute? I just think that the chances take. of that happening are absolutely but minuscule. But are they minute more, but so are the chances of your opponent not killing you that Yes. Time. And further, if you, even if your opponent misclicks through his combat step, do you have any outs for the following turn? Uh, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I don't know his deck. Yeah, but I mean, because you're not even casting anything there. So given that scenario, mm -hmm. I would concede in that scenario. Sure. I mean, for me, I, I don't. I just I make you kill me for five seconds. Like, this is an aggro deck. This this match is not going to go to time. Eh, it's unlikely, so but for you me, never know. Eh, you never know. What? I'm willing to take the the 0.0005% risk yeah, that it does. You're saying that, and that that's true. But like, what are the odds that you win this game after passing the turn? 0.005 whatever. Like, minuscule. Lower than the them. odds this goes to time. Uh, sure. So why is it right? <laughs> because it's five seconds that I can spend, and sometimes your opponent plays something too. They're like, oh, I'll put this, uh, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll equip this guy up with a Rollicker or something, even and then that, I get a little bit more info. Even that unlikely. And I, for five I, seconds, I'll take the chance. That's 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 where I'm at on it. Yeah, but I mean, even though that's Me, Meanwhile, we've okay. got this uh, this match going on here. Oh, no, I didn't even realize I started again. Sorry, I was talking about that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a good start this time for Charles. It's a yeah, he's just sort game. of puked his hand on the table with the old one, two, three here, though. His one drop is actually just being a pretty decent. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So there's this, there's a, uh, a scry on the stack, and, and Charles is like, I am blocking. It's taken two damage. Yeah, well, he's definitely going to block. It's interesting that he didn't necessarily want to trade Laguna Band Elder for it. I feel like scrying over and over again is a little bit more valuable than that extra plus one plus one. Do you feel like he's just falling like slightly behind every time he lets him scry that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't really like letting my opponent keep scrying. Um, maybe he has a plan for the Laguna Band Elder sure. or a plan to blank the Sigilt King. Okay. Because if you are going to blank it later, then of course you don't necessarily want to trade with it. Right. Especially when you're trading like down like that. Right. Now, I, I, I'll say uh, Charles's deck does seem still really heavy white. Like, I wonder if he's just like has a couple of green spells because I still don't think he even has one in his hand and he's played all white spells well, it'd here. It would be weird if he was bluffing with that Snarecaster hair. So he probably has something. I don't know what. Either way, it got through. Yeah. All right, so there's a green card. He's got Nyxborn Wolf. I couldn't see that one. but And that's a nice splash because it's single green. It's good on small creatures. Mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense in a white weenie deck. I was start at three if that's all right. Is that not all right? So Charles League really using his mana up. And nicely here and, and adding to the board. He's got four creatures on the board already. Knowing how aggressive Brian Brondwin stack is, this is going to be a really tough game for him to win because his opponent has a lot of stuff in play and is ahead in life. Right. And that's not what his deck is built for. Right. It was the it was the game that we just saw. Yeah. That's what he wants. He wants his opponent to stumble a little bit and he just pounces on him. Right. And I mean, Brian will have the play in game three, so we'll see if he can get a draw like game one in game three. Should this go there? but I would be very impressed if Brian can win this game. Yeah, right now he's behind on the damage race significantly. Behind he's on the board. He's behind on board. And he's not playing a deck that kind of stabilizes and then turns the tides, you know what I mean? Right. There's a couple of damage from the Butcher that's going to get in. He does have a three drop to play now, and it's Elite Skirmisher.
see what Charles, well Charles is just going to ship the team in here. Well yeah, no reason for him not to. In they go. None of these trades would be a bad trade for him, and I'm assuming he has a trick unless he just blocked right into the Butcher the previous turn. Right. I wonder if he has Acolyte's reward. Oh wow. What a blowout that would be. Yeah. And that's not a card I'm not a big a fan of because of how situational it is. Mm -hmm. But if you're this heavy white where almost all your guys are white, then yeah, sure, it's a great card, you know? Right. He tapped two mana, but he's thought better well, of it, it looks like. He can't be thinking about Acolyte's reward, right? Maybe he just wants to make sure he says it right, like what you target and everything, because that would it, be... It is a weird card. Yeah, but that would be such a blowout. How could you wait for a better opportunity to use that? Right. I'll redirect the three damage from that the Elite Skirmisher it was dealing to your Butcher, killing two of your guys and me losing nothing. Oh, this could get really bad if he has the Acolyte's reward. There's a... Oh, jeez. He does have it. Wow, and so he passed to try and provoke the trick and got to. That's pretty greedy. It sure is, but it's going to pay off for him this time. Yeah, I don't know the rest of his hand. I mean, if he was, I mean, it depends on his hand because let's pretend he has a four drop, then he passes and lets, lets it just happen if he doesn't assault because he can just tap his four mana and play his four drop. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend his hand is Acolyte's reward and two land. I wouldn't pass there. That's just unnecessarily greedy, you know? Right. You can leave the coordinate assault in Brian's hand. That was a huge blowout. Yeah, I mean, now he gets a three for one, basically. Yeah. And has put himself firmly in the driver's oh, seat I to mean, close out this game. That was a great play. I'm just saying that's how I'm evaluating the situation. Because people are going to often be like, OK, I, should I acolyte to reward in that spot? Or should I pass and see if he has another trick he wants to use or something? Mm -hmm. So for me, it comes down to that. It comes down to if I have a three or four mana card in my hand, I'm just going to let the Band Elders trade if he doesn't coordinate assault and drop it. Right. In the event that I don't, that I only have the reward, I'm not going to try and pull coordinate assault. That's getting too cute. I'm going to get the value out of my reward, you know? Yeah, for sure. And here's a press of raise to lock down the Lagana Band Elder. But you got to wonder if that's going to be enough here. There's a, a Johnny's presence as well in Charles's hand, so it just keeps getting worse here. Yeah, and you can see a oppressive raise. Very bad when you're on the defensive. Terrible. Because they can just pay three and attack. Right. It's great when they're on their back foot because they can't afford to pay three in order to block. Right. And he's going to get another blowout here. Oh, my. Yeah, this is just getting ugly now. BBD is going to get two for one here as well. Yeah. He's going to take five damage. Yeah, and this is where uh, I would concede if I was BBD. <laughs> right. But they've got plenty of time left in the round, so he's going to take his draw step here and then scoop him up. So here we go to game three. So we get a pretty, I mean, the, the, I kind of like this matchup. They're just slugfesting each other, right? I mean, one of them's, you know, almost mono white, and the other one's white red, and they are just dumping their hands yeah. on the table and just going to, going to the beatdowns. there's downs. nothing wrong with aggressive decks and tricks, and, you know, it's fun to see. I'd like to see a game this time maybe where, um, Brian has a good draw, and Charles has a good draw. I would like that, too. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with Brian's draw that game. Just on the draw, it, you know, Charles had too much, I think. Right. Maybe if Charles didn't have the accolades reward, that could have been a really good game. Yeah. Or the Ajani's presence. I mean, both of those tricks were to kill one of Charles's creature and leave BBD with pretty decent attacks on the backswing, but uh, neither of them actually happened. Yeah. Yeah, both those... Both those tricks ended up being a huge blowout. And both of those games were really not that close. Right. So it looks like, is that a Chronicler of Heroes that uh, Charles has? Yeah. And he's going to take out an Excoriate? Excoriate? I don't like that. Yeah, th I think if you're going to be racing, you, you want that Excoriate, yeah, right? Yeah, and we saw Brian has all these creature enchantments. and Like Fearsome the, Temper? Yeah. I would probably bring in Chronicler of Heroes. A 3-3 ground creature is good against uh, BBD. You gotta wonder if that was, like, do you think that that was in the main before? Like, feels, I mean, as long as he can cast it somewhat regularly, that's a solid creature. Yeah, we don't know how light his green splash is. Right. I mean, we didn't see any green there, really. Just, J a just the wolf. And one forest, so. Yeah, he's nearly mono white, it seems. But I mean, I don't, if he's got, you know, five, six forests, and you probably don't need more planes than that, so I wouldn't even mind increasing that by a forest or two and getting in Chronicler of Heroes. The card I take out against BBD's deck would not be Excoriate, though. Like, Excoriate is bad against decks that don't want to attack you, uh -huh. because then they don't have tapped creatures for you to kill. And Excoriate is bad when all the creatures are, like, two mana two twos, because then you're just Excoriating a two mana two two. Right. It's good against Fearsome Temper, um, creatures like Seder Hoplite and Akron Skyguard that people have to invest heavily in to make good, and then you can excoriate them after people have dumped a bunch into them. Right. I, I mean, I'm not saying, like, I like the Chronicler probably more than the excori Excoriate in this matchup, but I would want both of those in, I think. I think so, too.
This is a big match. Well, yeah, I mean. Um, this is a big game. Yeah, a game for a top eight, right? Right. Basically, there's a very, very, very high chance that the winner of this game is in top eight and the loser of this game is not in top eight. I know I've been here a couple of times. One game. I know um, if I'm Charles, this is kind of an interesting matchup to me because Brian's deck is so focused uh -huh. that you can make some drastic changes sometimes to your deck to gain like a bigger advantage. Like you can board out five and six mana cards and board in any three and four mana cards you have because you know that if you can stabilize, you're probably going to win. Because, I mean, we've seen Brian's deck, right? Multiple Oppressive Rays, multiple Seder Hoplites, a ton of pump spells. His deck is not very good at okay. using lands past five, you know what I mean? Right. His deck is not going to be very good in the late game. All right, BBD takes a look at his opening seven here. Uh, I don't see any mountains in there. Does he have a, a one plains hand? It looks like a maybe, maybe two plains hand, but no mountains, I right. think. Right, and I can't keep it, so he's going to ship it back, but it does look like Charles League has kept his hand. So. And good for Brian. I see too many people keep two landers on the play like that where they can't really cast things mm -hmm. and then just lose. You know, his deck has a low curve. It can function fine off six. We don't know what his six is going to hold, obviously. It may hold zero lands or maybe a perfect tan. But if he draws a reasonable six, mountain, plains, some early drops, some pump spells, he's going to be really happy he mold into, instead of keeping that seven. Right. Of course, if he draws six lands, he's going to say, wow, why don't I just keep the seven? But you know, <laughs> an average six is going to be better than that seven. So the correct choice for Brian here was to mulligan. All right, so let's see if BBD is going to be able to keep his six-card hand here. This is another big decision for him as, uh, once again, playing for top eight. Uh, and yeah. he's got another one plains hand here, it looks like. Yeah, and this one's got to go back. This is worse than the previous hand. I mean, he's got the oppressive raise, but you can't just pass on turn two and three. He's got double oppressive rays in his hand. Eagle of the Watch, but that costs three. Nixborn Rolliker, I think. A lot needs to go well for him to make yeah. this hand even a remotely good thing. And remember, Charles League has kept and also has shown us that his deck has a very aggressive side as well. Yeah, and while. You know, BDM's not going to have, or BD, BDM, BBD's not going to have a lot of time to just sit there and, like, hope to draw lands. Right. Like, Charles right. can close the door on him. And while you do want a mulligan less liberally from 6 to 5 than from 7 to 6, mm -hmm. each mulligan is, like, exponentially worse for you. That's not a keep. You just can't keep a one lander on the play. Even with the oppressive raise, they're not removal. That hand just isn't going to win you the game. Just try and draw a good 5, try and get a little lucky. You know, for all you know, this is a good hand, Mountain Plains to drop. Maybe you don't get flooded, you draw pump spells and dudes, you know. Brian's that can function off five cards. With each mulligan, you increase the chance that you're not going to play Magic, that you're, you know, not going to draw Plains and Mountains, or they're going to get flooded, whatever, because you have less margin for error, because you have less cards. Right. But a good five and a good top five cards on his library, Brian's that can definitely function here. All right, let's hope he gets a good one here. I want to see a sweet game of magic. Yeah. We already got it. Mountain Plains, a three drop, and a trick. All right, we're in. Yeah. Here we go. We are underway. Charles League says, I'm pretty happy that he yeah. mulliganed to five, but uh, a nice start for him here. Oh, look, and he drew a two drop. So now, Did now he really? He, yeah, so oh, wow. now he's got a good five. I don't know if you know he's going to win or lose. You know, he's got three cards in hand, but he's got the ability to scry to find what he's looking for. He's got a three drop, a trick. Mountain and Plains. Okay, this and hand, Charles has no two drop here either. This hand is much better than his six or seven. And there's Kragma Butcher. And do you think BBD, he, so he doesn't attack here. Is he playing around the uh, Acolyte's reward there? Yeah, he saw a lot of tricks. I guess he doesn't feel the need to scry that bad, but I mean, I would probably attack because you, you want to scry lands to the bottom, and that's about as valuable as a skink anyway, and you have no knowledge of whether or not he has a trick. So, I mean... Yeah, because really, what's like what's what's the great uh, thing that this Sigil Skink is going to do this game? Yeah. It's not going to get in for damage very I wouldn't very attack often. if Scry wasn't no. valuable. Like, let's pretend my hand was three drop trick and I had two lands and I didn't have land three. I wouldn't attack because you don't really want to Scry like a two drop to the bottom. You don't really want to Scry a land at the bottom. You know, Scry isn't that valuable. But he already had a third land in hand, so I would attack because I'm happy to Scry any lands to the bottom that I can at this point. Right. 
All right, so here's Observant Al Sayed for Charles. He misses his land drop for the turn, but he's still developing his board, so it's not terrible news for him, though you got to figure that he would have loved to have played like maybe a four and yeah. then go for the Observant I'll say it on the wing seed rider. That's so tough for BBD to get through. Yeah, and, and BBD's getting a little flooded. I mean, I think he's got two land in hand and he's been scrying land to the bottom, so kind of unlucky at this point. Did he scry there? You know, I didn't see him do it, but he might have. Yeah, he, he's pretty fast. There's an excoriate off the top for Charles, though. Unfortunately, it's not a land. He can't actually cast it. So we're just going for the slugfest again. These players are just racing. Brian needs a couple of spells before Charles draws out of this. Yeah. Mana Screw usually beats Mana Flood because given time, the screw turns into a good hand. Right. The Flood will pretty much always be flooded. And Charles definitely has a good hand. He's got a Supply Line Cranes and Excoriate. Yeah. I think he's got like maybe a Tromper or something in there too, but he, he's definitely got a grip full of awesome stuff here. And if he can find some lands, he's going to be able to get out of it. The, the, the onus is on BBD to try to close this game out. It's going to be pretty tough. Right. He has to do it before Charles finds even one more land, it looks like. Oh, it looks like he's got Divine Verdict too. Yeah. Charles does. Yeah, I mean, it's not like if Charles hits land four on the last turn of the game, he's going to win. So if Brian can draw some more spells and get some pressure going. Right. All right, this is awkward for him, but he's going to play Oppressive Raise. That means that Charles can unlock it to block, but can't play any tricks like the Acolyte's Reward or anything mm -hmm. along those lines. I like that play. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately for BBD, Charles didn't do anything for his turn anyway, so he doesn't get the full, like, play it hit you effect out of it. He kind of gave Charles something to do with his mana for that turn, but uh, didn't really have a big choice there. So a green card, I believe, off the top for Charles, and another non-land here. Ravenous Lucracata. Very good. How close was I? Very close. It's I'll Luke Krakota, take it. but Luke Krakota. I'll take still it. Luke Krakota. Like I bet you that's an acceptable pronunciation. Yeah. Luke Krakota. Yeah. Crow. You're doing great with the card names. Thanks. Did you uh, study up or something? I have been. I have been. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, I want to do even better, but I really was practicing them like for the past month. I've just been like saying the names. Uh, it's. And it's when to say I'm names. impressed, man. It has really shown. Now there's. Uh, Hopeful Eidolon just played out of Charles League's hand. He knows that if this game goes much longer, he's going to find the land and he's going to have answers to everything that BBD's doing and he's going to be able to take over. So he's fine just throwing down the Hopeful Eidolon in the hopes of blocking and trading this with Sigil This is going to be interesting because he's going to have to use his trick or that or that is going to get eight and obviously he has a trick. Yes. But we know Brian Brondwin has a coordinated assault. Oh, he let it happen. Interesting. Interesting. So he did not want to, he, he said he was actually fine with just letting the 2-2 two, two die. He might not have a trick. And he also just couldn't have it. He, he played, might just not have it. He yeah. already played several cards. You could play with the mana he had in his opening hand. And you would definitely keep this like two to three planes opening hand. There it is. Oh, just in the nick of time. And he's going to immediately go to attacks. And he's going to excoriate. Yeah, see, I kind of like, eh, anyway, whatever. E either way, the God's Willing is going to counter it. Did, Did he, he scry, scry that yeah, time I too? I don't know. Either he, oh, he might have already known it because of skink. From the skink, yeah. Yeah, he might have just left it on top. All right, here's Craigma Butcher getting in there for four now. Can PBD find something? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he didn't scry, off. but I think he left it on top. Right. But maybe an Ferris Warden? What, what has he got? He is tapping four. Yeah, Ferris Warden, there she is. And that's going to do some work against Wingsteed Rider for the foreseeable future here. Meanwhile, Wingseed Rider in, and Charles League maybe just passes the turn and leaves up his, his Divine Verdict. Maybe he's got a four drop. No, he's just shipping it back, so. It's an interesting game. I wonder if Brian will try not to attack into this Divine Verdict here. Yeah, it's weird because he could also be thinking that Charles, like, maybe wants to try to, to block something with his uh, yeah, I mean, there down guy. Yeah, but there it's, aren't really white flash creatures. Right. Uh, I'll attack. All right. The four blocks. I can go ahead and block before you pack this Some of the judge told me earlier. I'm not sure what he's pointing at that for. I think he's trying to find out whether it, it can be tapped after he pays the three. Like if he pays the three does it, and then he taps he in tap response, it. Yeah, right? but you can't do that. You you declare it as a blocker uh, I mean, and then pay the three. You can't actually declare it as a blocker unless you pay gotcha. the three. So I'm guessing that's what he was asking. I'm fairly confident. I'm not 100%. I'm not the world's best with the rules, but I'm fairly confident it works like that. It's at, like as it blocks, you're required to pay the three mana. So I'm pretty sure that you don't. He wouldn't have an opportunity to tap it after you pay the three. I mean, he would, but it would already have blocked. 
So, so the wording on the card is enchanted creature can't attack or block unless its controller pays three colorless. I, like I said, I've, I'm pretty sure I've seen this come up. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Yeah, now but, it's uh, I, I think you pay it as it blocks. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty, uh, it's not like, it's not like you pay three and then just disregard it for the rest of the turn. It's like when you want to use an activated ability, you pay three. When you want to block, you pay three. Because if you have a creature with an activated ability, if you pay the three, you can use it, but then you can't attack with it also. You have to pay three again when you want to attack with it. Maybe, like I said, I think I've seen this come up and I think it works like that. I'm not 100% sure. All right, well here's Divine, here's Divine yeah. Verdict. In any case, uh, Charles League is just going to fire it off on the Kragma Butcher here and really take away the clock from Brian Bronduin, and remember, BBD's at six here. He's been getting hit. Yeah, and it seems like that might have been a little bit of a, a game anyway, because wouldn't you rather Divine Verdict it? Absolutely. Like, even if it works the way that uh, Charles wants, where, you know, he pays the three as blocking, the way I think it works, wouldn't you want it, you wouldn't want to do that. You just want to Divine Verdict that Butcher, right? Exactly. Why would you want to chump block it rather than Divine Verdict it? Well, Charles League's hand is sick, too. He's got a uh, Celestial Archon. He's just going to play it out here. That cannot be tapped down by a Forest Warden. It I looks mean, like barring a, stale, a steal, this game's over. Right. I mean, Brian Brunduin might be able to, you know, harness by force right now yeah. and then coordinate assault, attack for the win or something like that. Right. But barring things like that, I don't think he's going to win this game. I mean, harness by force would have just won it for him. Right. But he didn't have it. And in he comes to knock BBD down to two. He needs something desperately here. Right, and it might be the same situation where a card like that might still deal seven and win the game. Right. But he's not winning a normal game here, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. In uh, fact, it doesn't do it now, though, because no. he has to steal the supply line well, crates yeah. and it's only two power. But he can also steal the, the Archon. Oh, and it has flying, right. Right. He can still win with Harness by Force, but not with Planes, Planes coordinated. Yep, so. and that's going to do it. Brian Brown has to extend the hand. Charles League looks like he's going to be in our top eight here. He improves to 13 and 2 with his pretty nice, like, near mono white deck there. I took Coordinated Assault. Was that? I took Coordinated Assault. Oh, okay. That's better, that's better than that architect. I didn't have. I had a lot of heroic guys. I know very no, few heroic 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 heroic. Heroic. I got one seven. That was like okay, so Rashad's le letting us know how the ruling works on that just for... Although I'm still confused for from listening to it. So for, would he have been able to tap it or would he not have For discussion, Shay, let's yeah. tell the listeners at home, because remember, they can't hear Rashad. So, oh, sure. So the deal is, it's a special action, and when you have priority, you pay the three to disregard the block anymore. Right. And so y you need to have priority to do that. So, so basically, they, you have to pay it before you go to declare blocks. Yeah, but so they can't tap it, then they don't get priority back, I don't think. Or do they? I'm, that's well, why I said it, I still don't understand. 